Hello. I, uh... Yeah, yeah. that's your yeah. name. Squirrels got me. Big Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Cold and fun. That's good that you think of that of it because that's what deer hunting typically is, is cold and fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday morning I'm blasting up on the pass and I see these deer moving. And I'm like, ooh, there's some deer moving. All of a sudden I just see this person just head down, just hauling ass wearing shorts and a t-shirt with a pack on. And I'm like I'm like, is that hard? My dad always talks about floating through the woods like the autumn breeze. So so Robert's when you're two hundred and seventy five pounds, I don't know how you do that, but the Freightliner? <laughs> it's just like a creeper. He's just kind of up in the corner watching what's going on down there. Yeah. You know? He's like... <laughs> you know, he's up there slapping and pissing all over everything. Is it warm yet? <laughs> How did you know the name of the actor? That's right. I know. How did you say his name? Her Hervé Velichos. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Pertinier means? If you know what Pertinier means and you live in America, you're a redneck too. <laughs> Welcome to the Log Talk Podcast, brought to you by Pertnir Outdoors. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode. This is episode 159. We're almost to that buck 60 number. Pretty excited about that, but that'll be for the next episode. For this one, uh, this is that conversation that I alluded to in the intro to the last episode uh, where I got to meet up with a pretty darn cool group of guys that are assembling in the Finger Lakes area, um, trying to do some some cool things, bring some cool offerings to people in the area. Um, and this is all kind of really just happening as we speak. So um, the the two guests on the podcast are Jason Ellsworth and uh, of Ellsworth Cooks and Josh Van Skyver. And, uh, and this is where we're hanging out at Josh's place um, this is where we all gathered here the other day and uh, had a pretty cool, like, little little feast. I showed up, and we had uh, – Jason had cooked a bunch of food, and Jed, who is, uh, who is ironically a good, you know, a friend of my brother's, that w now Jed falls into this picture, which is kind of funny, the way that uh, – how small of a world it is when you walk into a place and people that uh, you weren't expecting to see or didn't know were connected to this in some way or another – we're standing there. So we, uh, we had a great meal of, uh, some trout and venison, um, and a bunch of a nice salad that was put together and, uh, the trout dip. So we had, Jason had smoked some trout and then we had some trout dip, which was absolutely unbelievably delicious. And, uh, I think Josh had made some little, uh, I'm sure there's some sort of fancy name, but it was like baguette bread with, uh, some, uh, some sauce on it of some sort, uh, aioli sauce, I think is what he said and a little bit of tenderloin on there, and uh, red onion, and uh, some sort of a garnish. That was outstanding, and uh, so it's pretty cool, and it's always a good way to start off a conversation with a bunch of guys to have a badass meal like that, and uh, led into this discussion here. So um, enjoy the chat, enjoy the uh, discussion about thoughts about what we can what we can do, uh, what can be done uh, in the future here to highlight this region that we have here in New York that is, uh, that is pretty unique uh, with the water and the land and all of the wildlife that we have to chase and pursue. So uh, enjoy the discussion. I hope you stay well. Have a great 4th of July, and uh, God bless America. Keep feeding them. Those little uh, uh, floral rose, you grab those little things and you get the needles in you. Yep. And like two weeks later, they're coming out, and you're like, man, it's on fire. Yeah, that really hurts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, I guess it's a good thing. I'd rather have them and battle, have the story, wounds. and then than not have the story of how they got there. Right. That's what like when you get to like midsummer and you got a good bass thumb working, like you you're proud of that. You yeah. know, if your thumb's all scarred up from lipping bass, like you're doing all right. I'm a I'm a trout jigger now, so <laughs> it's the highest form of fisherman. Yeah, I look Big down at bass. You're pretty elite. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> you know, I see the guys bass. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, that's what everybody's doing. You, you, need you don't jig for trout? <laughs> I, I've i got, I don't know, it was like a year ago, I started getting the itch where it's like, why am I wasting my time bass fishing? And I don't fish nearly as much as I used to, but it's like, why am I wasting my time catching fish and throwing them back? Like, I need to start keeping these. Case in point, what you just fed us for lunch. Like, 
oh my god, that smoke trout was outstanding. Yeah, I think that's um, it's funny that the people I know in Naples been trout fishing. You know, that's like trout capital of New York State. You know, yeah. those guys are they are holding those fish as monarchs, and uh, they taste like crap. You don't eat those and. It's that generational mistake that I always talk about. It's like their grandpa cooked them bad one time, and, you know, there's a whole family of 15 grandkids that don't eat lake trout anymore because they were fed one 30 years ago that tasted like shit, and now they're, uh, you know, don't touch that stuff. And then a guy like me comes along, hands them to them, and they're like, what is this? I'm like, lake yeah. trout. That, I mean, it, that's, that meat was amazing. Yeah, it's, it's super good. Yeah, it's super good. And uh, uh, it's – it's a uh, – I feel like that's so many things. Bear, you know, like if someone offered me carp, I think I'd try it now. Just because everything for so long has been, it can't be good. We're going we're gonna to hold you to that. It's on the podcast now. I'll eat You're it. You're going to have to eat some carp. I'll totally eat it. And you, you last week, what did you have raw? You had raw something last week. Lake trout. How was it? Awesome. Yeah? Yeah. I think you put enough wasabi and, <laughs> and <laughs> soy sauce and anything yeah. will taste good. It's, it's no different. But it's it's uh, sushi, really, you know? It's Without uh, the wrap. Sashimi, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was lay, good. Lay the burn down. If you can eat salmon raw. Yeah. But talking to my buddy who's a doctor of fish, <laughs> I was like, do you think I'm going to get sick from this? He goes, you probably should have frozen first. But, oh, really? Yeah. Would that, what would that do? Like, get that some kills of the parasites. But I don't know. I'm fine. We'll find. We'll, think, we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks and yeah. see how you're doing. I think I'm fine. See if your innards are coming out. Do I look fine? You no, look good. My no. hands are starting to sweat. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, all those little all those little prickers are coming out. Yeah. So I'm I'm sitting down at a pretty incredible place right now. I'm at Josh Scriven, right? Van Skyver. Van Skyver. Yep. God yeah, darn cool. it. Let's strike I wrote one. it wrong. Strike one. We'll start over again. <laughs> so we're at Josh's place here. Yep. Down in the Bristol Hills. And I'm also with Jason Ellsworth. And uh these guys so we connected, Jason and I did, well, I guess Josh, you and I did a couple weeks ago. Um FLX Outdoors here in, in uh, formerly Bullseye in the outdoor store at the kind of at the junction there of, of 5 and 20 and had it was at 64 that runs down to Bristol Mountain. Yep. Um, so that store has been there for years and there's new ownership there. So they're trying to, you know, I think that was effective June 1st and they're really trying to cultivate what we know we yeah. have here in yeah, the Finger yeah. Lakes and yep. get guys together. So a few weeks ago, Josh reached out to me and told me about an, uh, uh, kind of an industry event you guys are doing. And then I saw this Ellsworth Cooks was going to be cooking. And I'm like, what the, this is, looks cool, but I like have no idea what the hell is going yeah, on here. Yeah. And I was like honored that we're like industry people. Um, so that led to me talking to you on the phone because I wanted to, because I saw your posts on Instagram were from Italy, which is just over the hill from us in Naples where our camp is. Yep. And so like all these pieces start falling together. So we ended up having like an hour Long yeah, discussion on talk. the phone last yeah, week, yeah. a really Great good talk, talk. Yep. and uh, <clears throat> and then end up saying, "Hey, let's connect for a podcast one of these days." And then this whole thing with coming over here today, and uh, and you told me yesterday, you go wait until you see this freaking place, and I'm like, I don't know what to expect, and I'm driving up and down the road here trying to figure out where it is because the addresses are all yeah. jumbled, and I turn in here, I'm like, "Holy shit, look at this place you got here!" So you've got a little uh, little mecca you're building here, Josh. Trying, we got a few more years to iron it out, but. One year down, I think we've done pretty good. I would say. You know, so, it's been a lot of hard work. I didn't do all of it. It's a lot of my guys and friends and family, you know. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of pieces to cover, you know. Yeah. So, we're, so getting, we're getting there. So, you're you're right here. You're kind of right between Canandaigua Lake and Honeyoy Lake. Um, up in, if anybody's familiar, like Gulick Road and Route 33, kind of right in this general area. And um, what, let's just kind of, I don't know where to go exactly with this, because what you've got with this physical location is a thing and a lot, but a lot of what we were discussing before we hit the record button is like what opportunities there are to share what we have and educate people about what we have here in this region with not just the resources, but also the people that have the skills and the knowledge to like really help bring new hunters and anglers and outdoors enthusiasts, regardless of what you do, whether you ski, you hike, cross country ski, whatever, there's so much opportunity in the Finger Lakes. Yeah. Um, I guess we can kind of just back up. <clears throat> Josh and I have been running in the same circles for a little while. Uh, we almost shared a lease together six, five, six years ago. Yeah. Okay, so um, you guys knew each other. Of each other, yeah. you know, and then um, I think <clears throat> the whole uh, 
athletics and outdoors kind of it's gonna take a little while to get used to saying that it is it's a new company it's a new yeah. name yeah um but anyway josh kind of kicked me the idea of uh private chefing up here yeah and i was like yeah man this is awesome especially because i'm here for the summer and uh i can't just fish all the time yeah. <laughs> My thumbs, they're all cut up. I got to stop fishing. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, we just did our first uh, kind of wedding uh, Saturday up here. It was awesome. Um, super cool. That, my, my goal is always to kind of do like-minded events for like-minded people, always keeping it like 15 to 20 people where I'm not just like the go get it boy, but like part of the, the event. experience. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and I think that's kind of what we're always talking about is like authentic where I'm always talking about is authentic things like finger lakes experience, you know, mm-hmm. like, um, really, uh, highlighting what we're, what, what's happening here, um, over and over again. And then, you know, with our <clears throat> sitting down for coffee a couple of times, we've talked and talked about more and more what this place could be. Um, and I guess I can back all the way up. I've been I've been working with a company called Copeland Creative that's uh, does these. They're an, they're an amazing film production team that um, kind of just <laughs> fell in with those guys, and they're they're pretty incredible. But they they produce for Lee and Tiffany Lukowski, and and uh, they invited me to come cook with those guys. And going back in the fall, um, but th- one of their big things is they do these schools where they're um, Copeland does. Copeland does. Yeah. So they're taking new videographers, new film guys, new photographers, and showing them the ropes. And they have this template of like how to do that. And there's no reason, you know, that template can't be uh, geared towards new hunters, new fishermen, new hunt- outdoorsmen, outdoor <laughs> people. Um, and the only thing that was kind of missing was a place to do that. And I think this is that spot to do this, where, you know, you're just in there. Place is amazing. It's a jewel of, of uh, what, 1940s? Something like that. Girl Scout be, camp? Yeah, it used to be a Girl Scout camp. Um, and it was like the lower 50 acres was the Girl Scout camp. Once they had the ice storm and they couldn't get that back up and running, another couple gentlemen bought it, kind of started fixing up and, you know, like was this was this garage here and stuff, no, or so you built this? We didn't build it. Okay. So, last two owners have done a lot of work, and then uh, we just kind of revamped it um, to a little more modern, and you know, redoing the Updated kitchen, the bathroom, things. a lot of up, remodeling and updating it. Um, and then the other gentleman before uh, that deceased, he had bought another two hundred acres on top, and there was three ponds that went with it, and uh, so it's food plots, everything. So a lot of the local guys um, uh, that sell redneck blinds or do food plots, land clearing, 480A forestry program, um, they've all been involved in this property. Hmm. So, like, when I started, you know, looking at it and talking to people, they're like, I've been there. Cliff uh, from FLX Outdoor, he's like, I grew up hunting on that land. No shit. So he's like, and then uh, his partner, uh, Troy, yep. the guy bought, Redneck blinds from him. Mm-hmm. They installed them here. Uh, Corey so Fig- he had been on the property. Yeah. So Corey Figueredo, um <laughs> sold me the property. Are you serious? Yeah. Cor- Corey's our neighbor. Is he? And yeah. we he come. Yeah, yeah. We know Corey very so very well. He sold me the property. He's <laughs> my forestry guy. He cleared all the food plots. No shit. Okay. He planted all my food plots with me. Helped me, you know, do all that. So there's a wow. ton of the guys that are like in the industry of either land, property, uh, you know. Owners of companies, uh, owners of local stores, taxidermists, have all either gone through here. Um, friends of ours got showed us photos when he was – there used to be a pool on the other side of the creek okay. or of the dip over here. And uh, he's like, I know that property. He's like, I got a picture of me my mom has with my feet in the pool. And I'm like – so we got a picture of him with in the pool. We had uh, another friend of ours in our group in Honeyway Falls – she went to Girl Scout camp here when no she was kidding. real little. And uh, so just a lot of people that are A lot like, of history, yeah. Yeah. It just, people are like, where is this? I think I've been there when I was a kid. And you're like, wow. Well, it's like, a good chance. Now come check it out. Yeah. Right? So a bunch of them are going to be here on Labor Day checking it out. They haven't seen it since they were kids. Yeah. So that'll be fun, too. That's so. super cool. But. So we have this built-in hub. Yeah. You know, that's a pretty uh, awesome resource that. <clears throat> you know, 
we could start implementing these schools, which we have one uh, the last week of deer season, the, the awesome new season between yeah. Christmas and New Year's. The holiday hunt, uh, yeah. Man, that is, I think, like, when you talk about, like, I think we all kind of focus on, like, what New York State does wrong a lot. That is a cool thing they did. Yeah. Like, I love that. When folks are home with each other, the idea that forever, you know, my family, our tradition was to pheasant hunt the day after Christmas, you know. Yeah. And, and now the... You know, and we were pheasant hunting to pheasant hunt, not because we're you know great great you know, pheasant hunters, but it was what it was what was open together. You yeah. know, with that. so so now the idea that like, hey, what's that do for the economy? That like you can give hunting gear for Christmas, like, right. which always was the worst. <laughs> like getting oh, awesome. and now I can't use it for two hundred eighty uh, days. Yeah, yeah, just and, can't get and, any fatter, so I right. fit into it. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's it's a really cool idea, and that's been my. You know, I'm a bow hunter first, bow hunter, bow hunter, bow hunter. And I think, like, you know, muzzleloader, one-shot gun, you know, I think that's the closest to bow hunting as you can get with a with a rifle in your hand. And fresh coat of snow, a couple inches in the morning, cutting tracks on state land. Nobody else, you, you lose. I think the statistic is, like, 70% of the hunters are done. After you know, opening after weekend. It's re, it, whatever it is. Yeah. Thank God, but at the same time smarten up people because that's some of the coolest times to be in the woods you yeah. know when you're when the deer are starting to get back into deer mode and, and being themselves and and it's it's an amazing scouting for the next year too when you're learning, learning escape routes for the snow of like oh man like every time i'm walking to this and like that's where that deer's dipping out I'm like that is is valuable information for next year's season but um we did the we did the math and i haven't done it yet i've done half of it but within uh, the, my, my lease is on Italy Valley, about 25 minutes away from here. But um, high tour to Italy Forest, to my lease, you can walk 11 continuous miles. 11 miles. Like, and that's, like, high country. Yeah. You know, like, oh, it's up and down, ravines, up and down, nasty. some cool yeah. shit back there, which yeah. is awesome. And, you know, I, I think between here and, and the – I've been blessed to be hunting and fishing the Adirondacks for a long time. Hunting, not so much, but fishing up there is amazing. But when you can – step off a road and walk for miles and miles and miles of like public land. That's pretty incredible. And when we're here in New York state, I think we were saying it before that, you know, we're right now within a half hour drive of 30,000 acres of state land. Like yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I was down in Texas in the, in, uh, in the spring and, I think 99% of Texas is like privately owned. Right. Like there's some things that New York state does right. You know, our taxes suck here, but they do go to land access. We have amazing, we have millions of acres of state land here. Yeah. We have uh, boat launches everywhere. You know, <laughs> like we can get access to our lakes. Um, and the, the fact that we as New Yorkers tend to leave New York to go hunt you know, I get it. Yeah. And I, I don't think I'd ever say don't do that because it's an amazing do that. But the the grass is always greener. There's some pretty awesome stuff to see here. You know, yeah. hiking through the Adirondacks is amazing. Doing that with a muzzle in your hand is pretty amazing. Hiking oh, through high tour is pretty amazing. <laughs> Putting a muzzle in your hand doing that is pretty amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's just, it's just additional opportunity. And, and in this area, I don't know if I'm sure you guys have paid attention, there's a lot of property that is getting bought up by – the Nature Conservancy by the Finger Lakes Land Trust yep. and a lot of those groups, their plan is they're kind of like the holding company. They're buying that land because the state doesn't have cash yep. to buy it at that time. So they're buying that property and holding it for a period and then selling it to the state. And you can see what they're doing. They're trying to get all that land along a lot of these Finger Lakes to be public, yep. especially a lot of the timbered area. And it's outstanding. Yep. And just a sidebar, like, my heart was so warm this morning driving down the side of Honeyway Lake and seeing the trees foliated uh, and not defoliated. Dude, monster, the last man. two years have yeah. been awful. Think, so I am, like, so – I think we're through it. I think we're in the clear. Three-year cycle, yeah. 17 years, so this yeah. is the third year. Because that makes – honey like, talking about all the great things, last year was really, really tough. Well, it hunting. the economy, too, when peepers aren't coming through when we're losing – huge angle of tourism because the leaves aren't on the trees <laughs> like like yeah they're uh they'll be back please come back yeah. you know but it's it yeah, was, go drink wine and just mm -hmm. uh and those, have fun those are those things are a plague man oh, those yeah. things we had we had the whole enti entire property sprayed did you so we were we had a with the 480 we had a 
a timber deal that had to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so it went before the deal happened with the sellers, we were like, we want that to be preserved. So with Corey, he kind of helped negotiate that, that the whole place got sprayed. Yeah. So they paid for half. I paid for half. Did it work? Oh yeah. So yeah. we took the first timber guy up and did a drive and we're going up the New York state snowmobile trail runs along our line. So we were going up along the line and you, and there's deer just bedded on my side. You look over to, to the neighbors on the right and there's no, can, no totally canopy. defoliated. Yeah. There's nothing. You can just see everything like full sun. All the deer are bedding now around our side because that's the only shade they had. Yeah. yeah. So it definitely. Jeez. We, cool. we, we've seen a few this year flying over too. So yeah. people are still doing it. Yeah. It's cool to see. It, it is, uh, from what I do understand, is that the trees, the trees under the amount of stress they've been under for the last couple of years, like this is going to be an awesome nut harvest this yeah. year. So we should have like a pretty strong acorn surge this year so hopefully <laughs> yeah. listen i'm a eternal optimist so me <laughs> like, too I'm like hopefully yeah. there's uh some good I'm like really if you dealt with that much crap for there's got to be something good that comes out of it <laughs> i left my, yeah. my two beard. years of hell i yeah. think we deserve a good acorn crop that's what we should name the end of this podcast <laughs> yeah, exactly. we deserve a good acorn crop we deserve it yeah <laughs> for sure but yeah it's uh should be a good year Hopefully, I always think that. You know, yeah, that's a, that's the eternal heart of a uh, the the optimistic heart of a deer hunter. Should be a good year this year. Should yeah, be it should be. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we we kind of ventured a little bit away from from we talked a little bit about this place. We talked about Josh, how you guys acquired it. You you are so you know so you are Airbnbing it. You just started doing that. So that's something people are interested in. Like, what does this place look like? You look in this region. You're gonna. It's pretty obvious. You're gonna find it. You'll yeah. see it. Um. So, like, looking at that and then – but to bring it back around, Jason, to what you guys are trying to do, you know, with you and Matt and – um Yeah. And uh, – The group Porter, Porter and Kevin right. McCann. Yeah. And like, the guys that were, that were here when yeah. I got here and, like, Jed, which is yeah. hilarious because Jed is good friends with my brother because yeah. their wives work together at the distillery in Honey Falls. Like, all these, like, little people yeah. are wound together, but everybody has a different skill and a different talent. And like, that's what I think, that's what I've personally been wanting is to figure out like, how can I, like, I'm one individual person with one voice, with one little platform. Like, how can I get out to more people? Like, I want to help, especially help. I'm so passionate about hunting. I want to help hunters learn. I want to get new guys out there that, you know, I take for granted that I had a father and a grandfather and my brother and my uncles. Like I had this nucleus around me that taught me. And like you, we were talking earlier, like there's so many things that I do polar opposite than my family. Right. Like I've started hunting with my in-laws and they hunt a totally different way. So it's, it's adapted me to hunt different. And when I come back to hunt with my family, I stay at camp and in the morning I wake up and they're all jumping on the four wheelers and going to their stands and I'm walking down to the truck and I'm driving down the road and I'm hiking a mile and a half up the hill on state land. Cause like, that's the type of hunting that scratches my itch right right now. Right. But like, that's something that. I've got a bunch of guys that I've connected on with the podcast that they're like, how do you, like, what do you do? How do you do it? And like, to me, it's just second nature because I've like learned by doing, but somebody who's coming into this and they listen to a podcast, they watch YouTube video. It's just, it's like, there's so much there to grasp and understand. It's too much. It's the, um, it's actually, there's a term for it. It's like uh, lack of selection by over choice. Like, I don't know which way to go because all this, between YouTube, first of all, I think like um, you ever hear the the phrase "be be aware of the man with one rifle" because he knows how to use it. <laughs> right, right? right. So I, <clears throat> as a as a avid outdoorsman, I've uh, <laughs> I've uh, tunneled my way through life, understanding that I am a bow hunter first. Right. So I'm I'm shooting my bow year long. I'm you know in the shop if I can be. I'm definitely. That's my, my first love is bow hunting. If you're a bow hunter and uh, trying to be a successful bow hunter, you're probably not a really good waterfowl guy, right? So Spot my it. trade, my Venn diagram is like, I'm going to exist over here in this world of archery bow hunting. And I surround myself with really, really good dudes that are really, really passionate about what they do. Yeah. So, you know, Porter Hunt, who's just here, might be – that kid's 27 years old and is changing the way people trout fish on the Finger Lakes, right? Like, the, and it goes back to like what, <clears throat> what your grandfather, what your grandparents taught you, what your father taught you. Those are generational mistakes like that have been passed down. This is the way it's done. This is the way it's done. So you can go back 
50 years ago, 60 years ago, and those guys were pulling copper and catching lake trout off the bottom, which is great. worked awesome then. But they didn't have the electronics that right. Porter has, who's a video game kid. He's like, this is like real-life video games. <laughs> and, like, it is like real-life video games. And he can, like, dial that sonar in so good that, like, you're – that fish is going to bite you, and all of a sudden, like, that fish is biting you. So it's, like, Jeez. completely yeah. – so, you know, it's, it's making yourself, like, realizing that, like, what you are first – and then surrounding yourself by really, really good folks that are just about passionate about the other things. So, yeah. so I have the amazing goose hunters in my life. I have amazing, you know, coyote hunters in my life. I have amazing, you know, that it, I just <laughs> visit their circles yeah. and retreat to my own. And if anybody wants to come with me, I have open doors for that level of like trade, you know, and I think that can exist across the country. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the more I help people, the more I'm helped. Yeah. And I think that's a pretty good way about going about life. And it's networking. I mean, you look at this, like the only reason why the three of us are sitting here is networking. Networking. And right. then we all have our little thing and I help, you know, I'm talking to you. We're talking about this place you have here. It's helping people become aware of the place you're renting. They might want to do an event. Then people are learning about Ellsworth Cooks and what you're doing. Yep. But then when you can have an opportunity to bring all of those people together into one place and start to like, okay, like we can do these sort of things yeah. where what you're doing with this, and you really, I don't know how much you've gotten it out there, but what you're targeting to do with this muzzleloader camp yep. and what the goal is, like, talk about that and maybe the origin of why, where that idea came from to do this muzzleloader deer camp. So my friend, uh, so I, I, I'll just go back to square one. I was in the beer industry for the past 15 years. I just quit that job about seven months ago. Mm -hmm. um, I went to work with my buddy, uh, Casey Bard, who owns Tactic Calories, um, which is like a high-end seasoning company out of Rochester, New York, geared towards outdoorsman geared towards wild game cooking um it's funny that i see that sticker all over the place like i just saw it today on someone's water bottle it says like smoke uh brisket not meth no, like that that's Nat natalie th that's oh that's a great yeah. those, those okay. that's like tact calories like today um he's awesome to follow on social media too he's like when i grew up i thought red lobster and olive garden were five-star restaurants <laughs> like but we all did we yeah. didn't but right. it's just like stuff like that that's just like so casey i went to work for him when i quit my um I quit my sales manager job for the, for the beer world and started working with Casey as his sales manager. Uh, fast forward like five months, like gas prices skyrocketed. Like it wasn't, uh, there's was a lot of ROI like to go out the door to sure. begin with to get that to work. And it was starting to work, but it was like, you needed time and time wasn't, time in the, wasn't in the option. Yep. So he's like, dude, I like, I was like, dude, you just gave me like access to this world of like Sorenex outdoors, which is like, the you know joe rogan is store next guy cam haynes is store next guy like these are top level dudes so casey brought me to winter strong and just introduced oh, cool. me to like the the baddest ass humans on the planet john dudley standing here you know uh um uh, pat ivy who's uh the the, <laughs> the winter strong was one of the most amazing things i've ever been a part of like it seems very um standing outside of it and looking in from like not being there yeah. it seemed like it was kind of cultish yeah but it was Bert Soren who's uh my age America's beard watch check him out on Instagram Soren X but uh he's his goal and this is such a good goal is that a lot of the like these are Olympic powerlifters probably haven't spent much time in the woods guys in the woods they've been sleeping under the stars their whole lives probably haven't spent much time in the gym and the guys have been overseas who've been, you know, taking care of this country, probably haven't done much of either of those things. So right. taking those three guys and putting them together is Winter Strong. Huh. So you're standing at Winter Strong next to whoever. You know, we're on an archery line. I'm watching this guy fumble with his bow, and I'm like, oh, let me help you there. And it all just snapped. I'm like, all right, because you're a teacher one minute, <laughs> and you're a student the next minute, yeah. and you're constantly, you know, learning – and, and teaching and, and moving along. And it, it was just a super cool experience. And I met <clears throat> some, like, what I, they're going to be my lifelong friends from this event. Um, I met a guy named Colin Cottrell, who runs High Caliber Hunts uh, in Texas. And he and I were talking about putting together a High Caliber Hunt up here. Um, but the perception in New York, which is... It's not high caliber. My, it's like we, it sucks. You know, like people it's like a rim fire rifle I'm gonna, up here. I'm going to say it again. I've been saying it for weeks. My friends outside this state think that you cross into this state, that they're going to microchip you. 
They're going to take your glove, bud. They're going to vaccinate the shit out of you. They're going to take every single one of your guns, and you're going to have to vote Democrat for 10 years. <laughs> like, that's what happens when you come to New York, which is none of it's true. Like, over and over again, the only people who get screwed by New York is the New Yorkers. Right. Right? Um, so that didn't work, but Colin kind of gave me this idea. So he brought me down um, to cook at one of his places. Um, he actually asked Tactic Calories to come down in case he's like, that's not really what we do. I was like, can I go cook? And he's like, sure, if you want to. So, so do like, you have like background as a cook or is it yeah, just like a hobby my whole, thing? Yeah, my whole life. Okay. So um, I learned from a very young age not hunting with a dad or a grandfather. They, they hunted, but it was, they're all farmers. You know, like the farm was first. Like, oh, you for didn't, sure. You didn't, like to go hunting or fishing was like, I think that's kind of why I hold it. I feel anytime I'm fishing, guilty. Because like, there's something you're not working. you don't do. Yeah. But it's a broken thing that's inside me that shouldn't exist. Get that. But um, the, uh, the, I went down to cook with, with, with them in Texas. And uh, he had, and this is kind of like how the industry works. Um, that it's constantly like, I'll do this for you. You do this for me. You do this for me. And um, Colin was uh, helping the Copeland guys out. Copeland guys needed... Uh, a place to do a school down there and Colin's like you come in and film my hunt for my hunters and I have a place that's an hour and a half away in South Texas that you guys can go do your school at hence a hub like this you know right. like where people are looking for places like this so <clears throat> uh, Copeland guys uh, didn't know them from anybody just other guys in camp and uh, Caleb is six foot five big southern guy like just the sweetest sweetheart of a human. Um, I thought, like, immediately I saw him. I'm like, I'm staying away from that guy. He's like, a big dude. He's just a big <laughs> dude, and, like, he seems, like, annoyed a lot, and, like, I don't, like, don't want to get his way. It's tense. And uh, when he was just working. Yeah. And uh, he goes, hey, hey, there, boy, what, uh, where are you? <laughs> he, goes, he goes, hey, there, boy, so where, where, are you, where are you from around here? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm not from Texas. Not around here. Like, yeah, I'm from Texas. Shoot, I thought for sure you're from Texas, boy. I'm like, nope. He goes, where are you from? I'm like, New York. <laughs> just had exploded. Like, he lost it. Like, what? What are you doing yeah. down here? How the hell? What? Do you seem all right? Like, <laughs> so that kind of, like, put a bug in me to change people's ideas about like, New York. But the what, what I didn't know was happening is I was building a relationship with the Copeland guys who, uh, you know, were asking me questions, and I was being candid. And candid and curious is a Bert Soren thing. Soren next thing is, like, be candid and curious. Like, ask questions. Be yourself. But, like, make sure you're asking questions and having that back and forth. And um, the, Caleb asked me, uh, so what's your plan? Like, what are you doing? And um, I hope he doesn't listen to this because I did such a shitty <laughs> Caleb Colton. No, no, it was great. I've heard him talk and it sounded nothing like yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much like, hey, boy, come over here. I'm going to break your neck real quick. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> so um, he goes, what do you, what's your goal? I'm like, I just want to do really cool shit with my friends and, you know, <clears throat> make, a, make a living at it. Mm -hmm. And he, that hey, kind of struck a chord with him. And um, he, this was still at the first camp in Texas. He's like, we're doing a school down the road. You want to come cook for us down there? I'm like. Yeah, just if you'll change my flights, I'll come cook for you. Changed, uh, changed my flights. He paid for me to change my flights and gave me all kinds of crazy cool content that uh, was you know, I'm still using it today. Like this is seven months down the road, but like no shit. His photographers are amazing. His you know he just introduced me to this cool room, and uh, fast forward a little bit, he's like, so we produced for Lee and Tiffany. <clears throat> um. I think I'm going to gift you guys. So he's a producer. It's very important for the producers to keep the talent happy. And he's like, Tiffany works her butt off. Like Lee and Tiffany are hardworking folks, man. Yeah. Like really hardworking folks. Like bouncing a baby on the hip and like mowing the lawn. Like they are They're legit grinding. They're not grinding. They're yeah. not just, there's not like, you know, I think there's a lot of jealousy <laughs> that goes along in this world. They're like, oh, look no what doubt. they got. Look what they got. They work their tails off. And um, so Caleb essentially gifted me for the turkey hunt that we did in Iowa with them. I went there and cooked for a week and uh, they're like, do you want to come back? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure do. So I'm back there for, for almost two months uh, for Iowa deer season. But it's in the, in the meantime, <clears throat> between now and September, I leave to Idaho to cook for South Creek outfitters for two weeks, almost three weeks uh, between now and then kind of got to make ends meet. So these little chef things are popping up all over the place, which is pretty cool. But 
I guess like when I was 15 years old, like the uh, the old guys I was in camp with, you know, like none of those guys cooked at all. And uh, they're like, yeah, we got to run into town and grab something to eat. I'm like, there's a grill. Over. I'm, like, I'm broke. I'm like, I don't need money. <laughs> like, I'm, like the, I'm like, there's a grill over there. Can we cook on it? And, and someone goes, Ellsworth cooks. I'm like, yeah, I cook. <laughs> and that got me invited back to that camp. Yeah. So that was always the, like, you don't want any, you know, ever, you never want anybody just sitting around camp. There's no. There's always a job to do at camp. Be, right. We're doing dishes. Right. Always loading something, firewood. Yeah. Something to do at camp. And if I can be the guy that gets goes over there and feeds the people, like feeding them, like that's where you're going to be. Feeding them. Feeding them. Yeah. yeah that's, I'll, I'll take that gig. Yeah. You know, and I had this really cool old guy once come up behind me. He goes, man, camp cooks. That's the job. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, you ain't got to do dishes. You ain't got to get firewood. You ain't got to clean the shitter. Like, camp cooks where it's at. I'm like, yeah, I got to get up a little bit earlier, and I got to make sure the coffee's good. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, camp cooks where it's at. You you ain't as dumb as you look. (laughs) That's awesome. It's kind of been that way the whole time. But, yeah, and I was in the the service industry for a long time. I came home from the service and got a job in a bar restaurant and worked, uh, worked in the bar restaurant industry for 15 years and started uh sales manager for distributing company in western new york yeah signed a lot of cool brands and just kind of weighed on me a lot watching um my buddies bars and restaurants closed and like drinking way too much like way too much i was drinking in 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 2020 yeah yeah it was just too much like it was just too much for anyone human to do i applaud the guys that can do it but my my whole my whole being puts me all into whatever I do, and I was all into that. And, yeah. uh, like, not being able to fix problems, like, and watching my friend's just bars close down. just close, yeah. and, like, not being able to help them, like, just killed me. Yeah. And I didn't realize how bad it was killing me for a long time. And then six months ago, seven months ago, I looked at my wife, and I'm like, this is killing me, and uh, I don't have a plan. But marriage, marriage wasn't going good because I was, you know, drinking way too much. Um, I, you know, I was – you know, I, I, I was just burning the candle both ends, 70, 80 hours a week. I'm like, this is not working. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I'm going to quit. And um, she's like, what's your plan? I'm like, I don't really have one. But I know that if I keep going on the track I'm going, it's not going to go well. Not going to be good on any front. And uh, yeah. she's like, all right, if that's what's going to make you happy. And now I think she's a little too – she's annoyed with me how happy I am. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> like, well, you can't win. Yeah. I know. You, you seem too damn happy. No, that, that's, just, that's just being married is what that is. Like, I, feel like, yeah. I feel like I'm in a good mood too yeah. much. <laughs> but it's, it's difficult when, you're, when you are – I mean, you own, a, you own your business or – yeah, I mean, like you become – you're just so committed to your job. Yeah. And then it does. It's very hard to see that sometimes when you become so completely consumed with it. Like the prior, I, with the same company I'm with now, but in a prior role, I was a manager and I was working so much and I was so stressed out. I mean, I literally, I was in my late twenties, a mm-hmm. freaking chest pain yeah. every day. Yeah. The stress, I had no idea what, what it was, yeah. but I was so freaking strung out. Yeah. People would be walking by me. They didn't want to acknowledge me or talk to me because I was so tense and I was focused because if I didn't stay focused, I couldn't get my job done. Right. But you know, at the time the company wanted, they came to me. Um, summer of 2019 and they wanted me to transition into this other position that I'm in now, which is actually the position I ultimately wanted to get into was physically selling the vehicle. But I was so in love with what I was doing and I thought that was what I had to keep doing and I fought it. And now looking back, it's like, oh my God, my life is night and day better than what it was. I didn't realize how much of a rut I was in, not so much just the day-to-day life, but I was like, I was just, I was stuck. Yeah. And it's hard. Like I give you a lot of credit, and I, I, but I see a lot of guys like yourself that are, that are like doers and are connectors yeah. and networkers yeah. that are like, screw this job, screw this corporate stuff. I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'm going out on my own. Yeah. And like I, I respect the hell out of it because it takes a lot of guts to go and do that. But now you have the freedom to like fish, fish, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like figure it out and like build these yeah. things. Like yeah. what, what you guys have the opportunity with this whole group of guys, yep. this region and the people that have, are coming together here. I'm really excited for that event on, on yeah. the 13th yeah. to meet everybody. Yep. But what we have the opportunity to do here for this region is more than what the freaking Finger Lakes, uh, you know, the, the council or whatever hell the group is that 
that markets this area because we're not talking about going and doing wine tours and tastings. Like we're no. talking about educating people and teaching them how to get out and do things. It's the, it's the, that's the biggest part is educating people. Right. right. A lot of people, there's so many people that are just getting into bow hunting. They're just getting their first license. Yeah. A dad, the kid's going out and the dad's getting it at the same time. Yeah. He's taking his son out and he's going, all right, if we shoot something, now what do we do? Right. Right. Well, we got to gut it. Right. You know, Cliff told me a guy came in and chainsawed his deer in half and brought it in, <coughs> chainsawed yeah, it in half. Wanted it mounted. And wanted it mounted. And he's like, I didn't know what to do. I've never done it before. And he's like, um, all right, well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I need but, a cape. Yeah. yeah. But, like, if we can be a bridge between yeah. people wanting to get out and a and we've all done it. We've made the mistakes. We've yeah. screwed up a yeah, lot. A and lot. So, yeah. Yeah, that you know, comes with the territory. Yeah, my yeah. buddy Nate will tell you, I, how many times do you forget to get, get the butthole out of a deer? Yeah. You know, first time you're doing it. Speak and, for yourself. I yeah. go ask first is you what know, we do. Just go yeah. Yeah. ATM way. all day long. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. He, no, like, okay. just little things. Just little things like that that yeah, people, yeah. you know, first timers <laughs> aren't going to do it. They're going to get in there and be like, which hole am I cutting? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, just – Walking them through those simple processes instead of they're on the side of the hill with a YouTube video trying to go, yeah, all right, start yeah. down here yeah. and then yeah. let's work up to yeah. the rib cage, you know. And it's it, all like you watch it a couple times and yeah. it's like, but it's like different when your hands it, are in there. Doing it is completely different than watching yeah. it. Yeah. Going back to the uh, butthole thing, <laughs> <laughs> can't leave that. We no, gotta go back it. to the butthole. My, oh, yeah. my old man, my stepdad, who's been my old man for 20 some odd years, is uh, Dansville Hillbilly. Nice. And anybody ever left their their uh, anus? Anus, that's yeah. the proper. Rectum. Rectum. Damn, killed them. Uh, <laughs> in their deer, it's a he would vacuum pack it and put it in their freezer. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> uh, well, we, yeah. Don't we, give anybody ideas. We used to get so pissed at guys that would bring their deer into the garage for to butcher it and it still had the nuts attached. Yeah. It's like, just get them the hell out of there. Yeah. We don't need them, like, yeah. touching the meat and everything. Yeah. But, there, I mean, there is, like. That stuff is being done around the country in these other areas. I can't tell. I can remember what we talked about in here. I think we were still standing inside, but like these sort of things and the, what we're talking about doing right here are being done in other areas of the country and are just like people are flocking, flocking to, to it. it. Like they yeah. can't get it right. quick enough. It's the content piece. So, like, even if we're YouTubing it and you're doing this, right? We could produce yeah. a lot of that stuff and yeah. be like, here's a first timer, kids. 15, first time he shot one here, he's gutting it, and this is right. how you do it. You right. walk it through him, then somebody else watches it and it helps somebody else out. There's yeah. it, a it, lot of things we can do. Now the, now the like, I'll just, this just came to my head, but, like, one of the big challenges that we have in the hunting industry is that, like, we rely on the YouTubes and mm-hmm. the Facebooks and the Instagram, and at any point they could say, we don't want your video of a deer getting butchered yeah. on our platform. Yeah. So, like, that's one of the things that I think, like, you see a lot of these whether it's, I, I don't I'm just going to use media because it just comes right to my head, but um, maybe not them in particular, but there's guys out there like Row Hunting Resources. Like he has his own webpage where you pay yeah. a yearly subscription and you get full access to all of his content. Like I think that's where a lot of creators are going to, you know, the YouTube's important. It might get you to find out about somebody, but you got to get them to a place where you have the ability to give them all that information curated by the individual, right. not whatever is going to be okay for YouTube to show I, today. I think you know? this is going to be one of our biggest hurdles because that already all exists. Everything we're talking about mm-hmm. already exists. It's actually getting the person face to face, face to face. And then like, trust me, I'm going to help you. I'm going to like, sh- and that's, I think that's, and I think we are kind of limited with like how many of them we could do. And like, you know, how many deer want to kill? Like all those things are, you know, so I think it's finding the, the right, initial group that you know has yeah you don't need to start out with the mat that's why i think what you're doing with the with the muzzle loader hunt right. it's a small group a one week period you're going to get a taste and see like how does this work what works what lands right. what doesn't I, w- I wish i could get a hold of them i wish i knew those people now because if i knew them now i could walk them through the whole purchasing of a muzzle loader right. like here's what you know here's you know the step one like here's what you know we've had a ton of success success with thompson center omegas you know they're bullet they're just a great gun and like and this uh that omega scope that goes on top of them the nikon omega scope with a 250 grain power or a 250 grain uh hornaday is sighted into that and yeah. like you know the like there's these things that like we know that i wish i could like be with that person i should just go hang out but, that's, but see like mm-hmm. that's the you know so just handing out flyers right <laughs> 
Oh, looks S- like you're about to purchase CVA. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over here, kid. <laughs> Come on over here. Traditions. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's but that's the like what we're able to do with the podcast. Right. What you're doing with all these because you got to get to people in all the different ways that you can get to right. them. But you can you get them thinking about these sort of things that they want to be thinking about. Last year, when the muzzleloader deal for the holiday hunt passed, right. there was a ton of ba- ton of guys oh, that, followed, that followed that right. followed us right. that were like. I've oh, never needed a muzzle right. before. I just either hunted with my rifle or with my right. bow. Right. So they were asking us, like, what grain bullets do you use? What kind of powder? What sort of this? And it opens up a whole opportunity. It is. It is it's not just, you know, there's a lot. I think, like, you know, I've been hunting with a muzzle for 30 years, you know, like a long time. You're like, old as shit. I am. Mm-hmm. I started muzzle hunting when I was one. I'm 31. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that you had 250 a beard then, too. I did. That wasn't a, a muzzle loader in your 150 hand. <laughs> 150 grains of powder, one years old. Yeah, <laughs> but that, I think a grain that's, a pound. That's right. Um, that's that's my new. Uh, you, you guys follow that hunting douche thing on Instagram? I've, I've had. I don't follow, <laughs> but I've had some people sending me. Yeah, there. Uh, somebody was like, you know, my ultimate goal is to have a 250 pound draw weight. Then it just bypasses all of the uh, problems. Yeah. with like you don't you know, have to fly. worry about flock right. and no, everything. Right, right, nothing else. A 250 pound draw. I'm gonna have the same draw weight. Like. Or weight is my, is my own weight. My, my own body weight. weight. Yeah, yeah, that's my goal. <laughs> no. Yeah. But uh, I think it, if you could get that guy now, that like, should be 100% buying a muzzleloader right now. Mm-hmm. Like 100% like figuring out like how to get that thing to shoot, like going through the whole nine yards. So he's A, ready for late season, and then B, ready for that like holiday season. Like, yeah. You, you gotta start now, right now, hundred percent now. What I mean, do you What do you shoot for a muzzle order? I mean, <laughs> my old man. He does. He's actually never shot one. No, nah. never. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll tell you. I got a fifty four caliber uh, uh, Renegade, which is a Thompson Center uh, rendition of the um, Hawken, which oh, okay. is uh, flintlock, That's which cool. is really fun to shoot with a beard. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous. What's that smell? Uh, it's just Ellsworth on fire. Yeah, don't worry about. That. <laughs> yeah, by the time multiple yeah, season's open, you have like half your beard right. gone. Yeah, so I shoot that. I have a I have a smooth bore version. I have a, I have a sorry, eleven cap of that and a flintlock of that, and then I have a, a Tom Center Omega that is probably twenty some odd years old. That yeah. was the first Omega that came down the line. Is that an in, that's an inline? Inline is yeah. that the one where it flips down? Yep. The, yeah, that's two hundred nine primer goes inside and mine's fifty. And uh, my my old man that was his gun for a couple of years before. And if you talk to him now. He'll tell you he killed 100 and some odd deer that. So if you talk to him six months from now, that number will double. Like, oh, man, I don't think I ever missed that gun, boy. That's 200 and some odd deer. They flip right over every yeah. time I take it out of the case. He is. I wish to God. He's, he's starting to lose his hearing now, and, like, he's not as, as uh, consummate of a woodsman as he was, man. But, you know, if you could freaking download that shit and, I know. and just put it in your own brain. Hunting with him as a kid, like, just blew my mind. I was home, I was a soldier. I knew how to move through the woods, you know, like I knew how to shoot. But that doesn't mean you're not a deer hunt. And you know, I, I'd be walking along, do 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 do, and he'd, he'd grab my arm, like push me down, and like there's a deer on the side of the hill that's you know 60 yards in front of me, and then he'd shoot that deer and make fun of me. You didn't see that? What the heck are you doing? <laughs> What's wrong? With you, you picking dandelions? What, 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 what the heck's wrong? With you? You're a booger eating moron. <laughs> If you had half a brain, you'd take it out and play with it. it was yeah. a good one. Oh, that, that is a that good was one. A really good one. Yeah, yeah. He, his insults were <laughs> top notch. <laughs> they hurt a lot. <laughs> still to this day, I can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're just, and he's still that kind of guy. I could write a book on that guy. I probably should someday. But he's a <laughs> those, but those things. And there was no internet. There was no book. There was no nothing. Like right. guys were just out right. being guys. Like I hear the stories from my dad and his brothers. When they were growing up, and it's like they didn't take hunting as seriously as we do today. Yeah. It was an opportunity to go to camp and be with the guys and tear right. it up and have fun. Right. They would go out, and they'd close every bar on the way back to camp, and then they'd go out hunting in the morning. That was, yeah. that was deer hunting. Yeah. Now it's like you've got to worry about your scent and your cameras and your camo yeah. and your boots match your, your yeah. clothes. Like everything's like – and it's just totally different yeah. than what it used to be. Yeah. The things have changed dramatically. A little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that's but so that's like that's why it's important to educate people because you don't want them having the wrong image 100%. of what we are because the the modern hunter is a lot different than the the old school guy that drove around with a gun in his truck all the time twelve pack in the back yep. whatever happened happened like it's, it's it's nuts to me that I love my old man 
and I love those stories. But, you know, I could never imagine even thinking about hunting like the way they hunted. Yeah. You know, like, there's stories of them pushing the median on 390. <laughs> pushing the median. <laughs> Dude, that's where the slammers are. That is where the slammers are. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> so going in those swamp they knew what they were doing. And 390 was a dirt road at that <laughs> oh, time, they too. They knew so. what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. Yeah, a lady hit that 140-inch. We helped her. <laughs> oh, man, that deer came out of nowhere. We'll just drag it outside the road for you. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Does yeah, they pop out of the bushes? He pushed out of the median. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I won't use his name. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to incriminate yeah. anyone today. It's really, really funny that uh, my good buddy's dad was a DEC officer in uh, Stu Bend County. I was like, you know. What was his name? Uh, his name is uh, Barton. Yeah, Barton. Okay. So Kevin Barton. I, I think his dad's name is Jim Barton. Okay. But Stu Bend, DEC officer, and I asked if he knew my beep. Yeah. And um, he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well aware. I knew those guys. <laughs> they were. Yeah, I think it was a different time then, too. Yeah. My whole family's Wayne County Sheriff's, and I think it was a different time then, too. It's like, yeah, they were up to their shenanigans, but they weren't hurting nobody but themselves. You yeah. know, where now. I used to be, they used to, you know, oh, you drunk? Give me your keys. I'll drive you home. Right, right, and, right, like, right. that was different. Yep. Was, everything was different yep. back then. Everything was different then. But that's uh, you monetize crime. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, let's not go on there. What are, you, what are you shooting for a muzzleloader? It's the Thompson 50 cal. The uh, Omega? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're, I've got a, I have a Thompson Center Icon, which is like their price point, like entry level muzzleloader. Yeah. That thing's been great for me. I've like, that's the next gun I think I want to buy another gun of is, is another muzzleloader. Cause we, it's, this will be my, it should be my year to go to Colorado to hunt again, but I'm just going to take a couple of years off of that. Cause it's tough with the young kids. Yep. Um, or elk or deer. Both. Both. Um, we've kind of, last year I went archery. I didn't know I was going to go. And my wife gave me the green light. Like, I'm like, hon, this is so nice of you to let me do this. But, like, you really screwed me. Because I would have, because the guys I was with were all hunting muzzleloader deer. And I, like, had no choice but to buy an over-the-counter elk tag. But I wasn't going to not go on the trip if I was getting the green light to go. So it was my third time out there. And it was like, we had a great time. You're watching elk. Yep, I never yeah. got within range. Like, it was where, just. Where were you? I can't tell you that. Oh, we were in Colorado. Up in. Uh, yeah, as my old man would say, that's a personal question. It is a personal <laughs> well, question. I, I just <laughs> drew for uh, Zone 15, so I'm going up to Steamboat. Okay. so Up, you, up in there. So we were, we're, we were in the Gore Range is where we've hunted. Okay. So we were south of you um, where you're hunting, but central Colorado, right. um, up in the mountains there. And, like, it's just. That area is so gr- – like, archery, I know there's, there's badass dudes that go up there and get it done all the time. Dude, freaking Porter hunt those here a little while ago. Mm-hmm. Hunted the Frank Church by himself. Shoot his priest. Yeah, killed a monster movie back there. That kid is a badass. That yeah. kid is – I'm picking that up. He's a you badass. You said he, he doesn't realize how cool he is. He doesn't – he almost was in tears leaving here because he was like, dude, I'm, like, I'm not cool enough to be – like, hang on. I'm like, dude, you're – those guy here for sure. And yeah, then he's like, like, I he's would like, love to have he's that like, guy hanging out. I didn't with me. know that all this was going to happen. I'm like, I didn't know it either until you turned out to be pretty damn cool. And he's <laughs> like, dude, like you guys are awesome. So yeah. that was that kid is going to he's he's going to do good things down here, man. He's smart too, but yeah. he's uh, you want to talk about DIY hunting? That's a kid to talk to. I've been talking to him for mm-hmm. a couple of years, and he's 27. He's oh, done. He just goes, tough. man. Yeah. He's just like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go do this, and he's you know hunted. Wyoming, he's hunted uh, Idaho, like, he's, and he's killed some monster deer back there, on his, like monster muleys back there on his own. That's so, no, no joke. We no. did uh, Pagosa Springs a few years ago, and I've done Wyoming out the Tetons. Got skunked both times. Pagosa yeah. so, Springs is Cal- Colorado. Colorado. That's Coast, southern Colorado, yeah, right? Down near New Mexico. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's. So you drew a tag. Well, I'll just finish my story. Do it. So I, I, <sighs> I, I want to get another muzzleloader because I've, because when we go out there to hunt elk or deer, you got to go no, no scope. So I'm yeah. like constantly switching my setup in and out and I would shooting. Too. I would just, so yeah. that's why I need to get a second muzzle. Yeah, that's what I always tell my wife. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I need I need two different purposes. Yeah, I can't, there's a it's irresponsible for, for me to have because then I'm having to shoot bullets to recite my gun in. It's expensive. Wasting powder. It's expensive. Yeah. By the time I get done with that, listen. You're doing really good to sell it to us. You're selling it to us right now. You just walk in that room with that same I will confidence. tell her. You Say, tell hun, her, honey, hun, yeah. honey, hun, the dishes. First. I got a, uh, I overpaid the escrow uh, this year, so I just got a check back from the bank. Yeah, <laughs> smart. But that's the uh, smart. yeah, that's a good one. I she doesn't that even, one. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. The, and our our governor just sent us all like a tax property tax check, yeah, so you that. can use that towards yeah. it. Yeah. But I'm I, I'm kind of interested in getting um, 
don't know. My brother just bought a. I can't. I don't know what the hell gun. I don't want to say. I want to say it's a, a CBA Optima, the long range. Yeah, I've seen those like a, with the spiral barrel. Yeah, and it's kind of barrel. a badass looking, yeah, yeah. but it's like it's just too long. Yeah, like I when I'm muzzleloader hunting here, most of the time we're doing still hunts drives, yeah. and I don't want to be carrying a freaking eight nine pound gun. Right. And so the Icon is a pretty nice light gun. I think you're also losing something by putting a bipod on a muzzle. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, you, like it's not. You're, no, it's not. You're, you're, you're yeah. sitting on the edge of a field or right. in, a, in a box blind, you know. Right. But right. I've also, I don't know if you've heard of the um, Woodman Arms. Have you heard of those? They're made in Vermont. No. Nope. Um, like extremely high, high quality gun. Like all the guys up in Vermont that the Big Woods Bucks gang and a lot of those guys that are the big deer trackers all in the Big those. Woods, yeah. they all use Woodman Arms um, guns, not all of them, but it's, it's a very popular gun for them. They're not cheap, but they're, they're highly high quality, well-made. If you're a person listening to this right now that wants to buy a muzzleloader, I think you go to that Omega Z five, like 50 Cal, like you're killing everything on the planet. With yeah. That thing. Yeah. You know, 250 grain Hornaday, like 150 grains of powder. I think like getting fancy with, I'm just, you know, me as a hunter, like you like, said, one gun is a is a dangerous right, individual. Right. And if yeah. you had, like, I'm gonna make an argument. If you had only one gun to hunt with, muzzleloader can be turned into a shotgun too. Right. So, and that that was with Iowa. Those guys, you can't, you can't, for non-resident Iowa, you have to hunt turkey with a with a muzzleloader. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they're hunting muzzleloaders that are shotguns. So. So what? You pack them with rounds with BBs in it? Yeah. What? Yep. Yeah. 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 I never heard of such a thing. Yeah. Bird yeah. shot and wads. Yep. Why not? It sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Different. But it is, I think like if you had one round, like one gun. Yeah. Like that. Here's a do it all. Like you can kill anything in North America. See what's it. tough. What's tough with those now with muzzlers especially is that there's not a lot of stores that carry Thompson Center anymore. I don't know what's going on with that. Well, I think Thompson Center got bought, right? By, I think they did. By somebody else, but I know they're still honoring all the grandfather guns sure. for the lifetime war. Well, like you stuff. can't get a Thompson Center from Cabela's anymore. Really? They don't sell I know them. that. So it's like, you know, there's the biggest you know you outdoor do store. store. You can go to a, uh, like, Arcport Guns. They yeah, you can go to a gun one. store. Right, right, right. They either have used ones there, or right. you can tell them I want one and they'll order right. you one. 100%. Yeah. And, and then it, it was, you see them too. This is a really good old man tip is that. After the season is the best time to buy those guns. So the guys will buy mm-hmm. guns for that season. I'm like, shit, man, I shouldn't have done that. And sell them back to a gun store. And then you can go buy those guns huh. at a discounted it's rate that are probably pretty brand new. Good time of year to yeah, go shopping. Good for time a gun. of year to go shopping. So right now it would be a really All good time, time to go turkey gun shopping. You know, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's a, that's a, and another really great old man tip is take cash to gun raffles. That's a big one. Yes. Because a lot of that's people where, win gun raffles and they're like, hey, that's where my muzzle loader came from. Thing. What are you going to do with that? Yeah. I'll give you 250 bucks for it. Yeah. And you're walking out with a brand new gun. Yeah. yeah. And, and probably a gun that's they never worth. win those things. No, me neither. They get but me I've, every bought time. Of, I've bought a lot of guns at them. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah I want I want to edit the um, Crossroad Limb Hangers. What, they're not operating anymore, but the, they were the Lima chapter of NWTF. I want to at their. The raffle maybe three, four years ago, I won a, a Kimber 1911 wow. 45 auto pistol. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was like a one, in, they had a, a deck of cards, and it was, you had to pay $100 in on it. Yeah. But one in 11 chance, I'm like, okay. So yeah. I threw $100 in, and it's like, like that, you know. Wow, that's so, a good gun. Yeah. Yeah, love those Kimbers. Yeah, that's a great, great tip. Going to yeah. gun raffles, carry some cash, because yeah. you never know. You, you, can, you can tell when somebody wins it if they're there, and you look at them, and they're like, I got three of those. They're not that excited. Right, right. You know, I mean, how, how many Sell times it. you see somebody win at this just like there to support? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, oh, what's this? 90. What's it worth to you? What's, That's what? how, so my dad, the four wheeler we have, our newest four wheeler, he bought off a guy at the, at the Honey and Falls gun raffle. My so, brother and I all, my, my first gun was an 870, yeah. bought off a guy for probably 50 or 100 bucks at a gun raffle. Yeah. Like, it is. It's just a Take great way to cash to gun raffles. Yeah. Well, excuse me, ma'am. You look like you're ninety years old, ninety years old and hundred pounds. What are you going to do with that twelve gauge shotgun? <laughs> yeah. Here's a hundred bucks. Yeah. Here's a hundred dollars and some scratch offs. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, so what we've we've heard a lot about Josh. I'm I'm very interested in your your background because I was you know you heard you talking about Charlie Elsheimer oh, earlier yeah. and like so what who the hell like where, what's your background because I'm seeing like the pictures in here you got all this stuff going on so. 
Uh, no, I just like the outdoors. My uh, Our family had farms in Jasper, Troopsburg area. Okay. So it was mostly uh, dairy farmers. So back then there was deer everywhere down there, and you just go down and a lot of drives. Um, so hunting with my uncles, my grandpa, my dad, my brother, their uncles, family. So it was like Thanksgiving. It was like Thanksgiving Day. You know, opening day, and then that was family day. You know, yep. everyone's down there. You're, you know, sitting in the morning by noon. Everyone's having lunch. Everyone's bored. Now we start driving, start pushing deer, and just laying them down. Um, so that was growing up, shotgun and pushing whatever gun they would hand you. Yeah. You know, we didn't have you know a ton of money to be buying guns and gear. It was, uh, you know, put bags on your feet. Whatever pair of boots you got. Yeah, slip the, the old it, plastic bag trick. Plastic bag, yes. put them on, throw, throw that's on. That's a generational trick for it sure. Is. It is. That's Re- waterproof. Repairs that's old Gore-Tex right that there. That is old Gore-Tex. So that was, that was kind of like where we grew up. Um, a little bit of turkey hunting here and there. And then uh, as I was growing up, you know, Charlie was a big part of my dad's life. And uh, so, you know, he gave him a Golden Eagle bow back then. And then the next Golden Eagle came down the pipeline. So I got the oldest one. Um, so I started bow hunting and I fell in love with that. Yeah. You know, just seeing way more game, being out, uh, by yourself, you know, doing that kind of stuff that, I mean, the, uh, some of the setups that we used to have compared to, <laughs> to now, Oh, it's my dad, my seat, we'd climb up in this pine tree. I remember exactly where it was too. I could walk there in my head right now as a little kid, you know, two by four screwed to a new two by four with bungees. Not ratchet straps, bungees oh to the tree in this platform that was, you know, yeah. two foot. And he'd be, and I think he actually got yelled at probably by my mom or something, and then finally started tying me in with a rope. <laughs> that's all it was. Wow, you I got know. tied in the rope. I, I, yeah, that, later that's on, high, that's high. you know, you'd get up there and you're sitting there, and he's like, I should tie you in. And so, you know, that was growing up, I would just follow him around. You know, we'd woodchuck hunt. Woodchuck hunting was like a lot of fun at my Uncle Dick's. and go sit down and sit on a pile and plank them off with a 22 mag. Yeah. You know, back then, I don't know how we got away with the stuff we did back then. You know, I remember them just like, you know, here's a 22, here's a pellet gun. I don't know, birds, squirrels. How old are you? Uh, 38. Okay, so you're a couple years older than me, but yeah, so, same Yeah, era. it was like, all right, yeah, here you go. You got a 22, you got this. All right, take a four-wheeler, you're driving around, shooting stuff. We saw a, fo- or a coyote going across the field. We chased it on the four-wheeler. We started shooting at 22s, that's... and you're like, and I was like 10 or 12 then, and I don't think, I don't know if I could let my 10 or 12 year old do that now. You know, it was just it, a different I, era, a different. 100%. You know. my, I mean, my dad would set my brother and I up. We, he, they'd be off working in the woods doing firewood, and that's how our family, that's how we paid for our camp. My, my dad and his brother logged it and did firewood, and they would set us at the picnic table, and I, I vividly remember it with one of those Remington tins yeah. of 22 ammo. I'd have a 22, Jimmy had a 22, and we would just pick a tree, and we'd try to shoot it in half. Yep. Yep. That's oh, just yeah. what we did. Yep. And like that's and we were probably like you're saying we were probably nine eight nine ten years old. Yeah, I remember my buddy is dead. We they're like, oh, you're gonna hang out over here for a couple of days. We're out of town. So we, so we get there and he's like, here's a I think it was a four ten and a twenty two, and he's like, I got a whooping crane in there. It's eating my bass. <laughs> He's like, 20 bucks, you guys can shoot that whooping crane. <laughs> what is the statute of limitations? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> federally, federally protected bird. <laughs> we, we come it back. It was a pterodactyl. Oh, yeah, there's yeah, strips yeah. in the yard that we yeah. blew from <laughs> shooting stuff. And he's just like, what are you guys doing? I don't know. You gave us guns and just took off for the day. We had nothing to do. We got three-wheeler riding around. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's how we grew up. You know, just same here. stupid kids in the backwoods running around trying to not get in trouble. But getting, getting in, trouble. in trouble. Yeah. So... <laughs> oh, that was – then, uh, you know, grew up around Charlie and that whole group of people and uh, just a bunch of different – That's cool. I'm sure those guys changed how you yeah. acted in the woods a little bit. Yeah, they made you. Or yeah. You couldn't be around them. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. just a lot of high-class people. You know, uh, Greg first, he, he – uh, You know Greg? A, yeah, I grew up with his sons and them, okay. Andrew and those guys. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know – Have had Greg on the podcast. Yeah, so, you know, he came from the bear side of things a mm-hmm. lot and did a lot of – Stuff for the state on that, um, so just a bunch of random guys. God, Probably a lot that I'm such. I a can't think world. of. Yeah. It uh, is. I, I think like the hunting industry. The more and more I'm, am getting, you know, dipped into it is uh, really small. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really tight knit, 
and one of the guys. Uh, and they all are specialized into one thing. A lot of them, yeah. you know, like, I mean, from bears to pheasants to, you know, bird guys, waterfowl. I never got into waterfowl. I've done it, tried it a few times, oh, never been successful. God, I, I know that. I would, I have a highly addictive Because you know that you would love it, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's how I, I don't fly fish, because I know I'd love it. I know. Yeah, I don't do it. Like, and Matt Smythe, who's just here, works for, you know, uh, Free Range America, Black Rifle amazing fire he's my hunting partner and he fly fishes like crazy and he's like come on let's go come on i'm like nope i know the second i start doing it mm-hmm. it's going to be a five thousand dollar bill <laughs> well i better get this orifice rod and those those waiters look pretty nice and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's uh porter was saying it today that uh he goes the guy that won the um candigua derby this year caught like a 13.9 pound lake trout out of a john boat like watching these guys with hundred thousand dollar oh, boat, yeah. like downriggers, everything, mm-hmm. and I I have uh, so much respect for yeah. the guys that could do it like that. Oh, know? I know, like those are the like, yeah. We'll have to get out and go fishing. I'm like, yeah. Then I'm gonna want to buy a boat. Right. <laughs> then I'm <laughs> no, no. We're you, yeah. <laughs> well, Porter's got a boat. Thank God. Oh, I know. So stay in your lane. Focus on what you're good yeah, at. Yeah, have yeah, friends yeah. that have these other it's things. Hundred percent. It. That's yeah. what you bring me do. along yeah. once in a while, and I'll be good. Yeah. That's it. I'm like yeah. it, it's a. Uh, you don't want to buy a boat. You want a good friend with a boat. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. It's a funny story with Greg. So um, anybody who's new to the podcast, listen to this for the first time, you know, it's awesome that Greg's name came comes up because I, Greg first, I went on, when I was in high school, senior year, you had to go and do like, a, you know, like shadow different people in different careers. And I thought I might be interested in, in that, in being a DEC officer, a biologist so or something. Bear den jumping. Yeah. So we went on a bear Tagging den. Them. Yeah, so I never went on one myself personally. My brother and my so my grandfather got to be friends with Greg, and they would they would go each spring. So my grandpa was taking my he took my brother and a couple of my other cousins um, to those den visits, which were awesome. Yeah, and uh, and then um, Greg, I ended up going and shadowing Greg. I met him in South Dansville down there by Pogues Hole. Oh yeah, and he took me. This was my senior year. I met him at the at the gas station right there off of three ninety and um rode with him for the day so it's like what you know so then i'm doing our beer event two years ago so we this is going to be our third year brewing brewing a beer and i wanted to we're i we're big into fundraising we like to raise money for charity and um i wanted to do something with the venison donation coalition so i reached out to them to communicate with them and the person i'm communicating with is greg first i'm like that name sounds super familiar Mm -hmm. i don't know where so we end up connecting he comes over to my house and we did a podcast, and he walks in the door, and he looks up, and he's like, oh, nice bear. And the bear that I shot, I shot the first ever. He probably knew it. <laughs> he literally knew the entire life history of that bear. He told me the whole story about it. He told it on the podcast. It was cool as hell. Oh, yeah. And my bear was a big deal. It was the first legally shot bear in Ontario County, like, ever. No kidding. Yeah. So, like, that bear got a bunch of attention. And, like, so Greg, like, knew everything about the bear, the age, where they – because the bear was actually – if I remember correctly, it was a, a cub that its mother was hit and killed in, like, Cohocton area. And they took it to Wildlife Rehabilitation Center up in, like, the Watertown area. And at, like, a year and a half, almost two years old, somewhere in that window, she was doing really well. So they brought her down and released her at Mueller's at the south end of the lake, the Finger Lakes uh-huh. property now. They released her there, and she lived in that valley. Yeah. And I ended up shooting her at the south end of the valley. Yeah. But, he, but they had radio collar data, data from her, and she had pulled her collar off um, that past winter in the den with the cubs. She had pulled the, the collar off. Yeah. And, it like, so it was just freaking cool as hell. That's, That's like awesome. making the connections. Yeah. And then, like, mm-hmm. where you're, like, you know the guy. You grew up with his sons. Like, yeah. it's broke, a, it broke my thumb at uh, one of his kids' birthday parties. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're causing some trouble. Yeah, we're playing tack, f- tackle football, and yeah. I got kicked. That'll happen. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. Yep. Yeah, I cut my I... thumb on a trout's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got trout cuts. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like crying in front of other it's dudes on boats. But it almost happened. It hurt. Yeah. Yeah, and now it stings. <laughs> well, you'll get to know from me that if I see my own blood, if I cut myself, I will pass out. Holy smokes. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. I know. It's Your good. Your own blood or anybody's blood? My own blood. Yeah. I can handle other people. Well, I shouldn't say that. I passed out. This is a good story. I don't know if I ever told this on the podcast. We're at the emergency room with my son, and he's like, it's almost, at, it, I think it was, it was the day before his first birthday. And we, have, we had had nothing like bad, bad with him, but he yep. had had like, he's got really bad allergies. 
and he was in a real bad way, and we took him to the emergency room, and we finally get in there, and I hadn't, my excuse is I hadn't eaten anything, I hadn't drank any water, mm-hmm. and yeah. it's like, it's like one in the morning, and they come in, and they're like, okay, we need to get an IV on him. So they come in, and I'm holding him down on one arm, and the nurses, the other nurse has got his other arm, the other one's trying to put the needle in, and, uh, and they're like poking him, and they're not getting uh, anything, yeah. and, and he is I mean, it's a little freaking, freaking one year old yeah, yeah. laying on his back, just screaming. And in my heart, you know, my heart's yeah, breaking course, yeah. for him. And then all of a sudden they get blood and I see the blood. And my wife looks at me and she's like, you doing all right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> and I sit down. And they, they, she slid a chair up behind me and I sat down in the chair. Next thing you know, I wake up. I'm sitting there and I've, I'm getting nurse attention. My son's <laughs> laying on the bed. He's fine. I've got nurses and they got a cold pack on my head. And they got a juice, a juice cup for me. And yeah. So I'm sitting there. They end up taking me and putting me. We're in the freaking uh, children's ER room in Buffalo at Oshai <laughs> Children's Hospital. Yeah. They put me in the, in the room next to my son, yeah. put me in a bed. I'm playing there. This is the best part of the story. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I fucking pissed my pants. <laughs> so I'm laying there in, the, in this hospital bed. My jeans, I'm wearing like light-colored jeans, soaking wet. I, wet my, I freaking pissed myself. So I get up out of the bed when I realize what happened, and I'm like, this is super embarrassing. So I get up and I leave the hospital and I go out to the car. I had the keys and I went to the car and I put my sweatpants on. And my wife, she, get, she had gone to check on me and I was gone. And she's like, where the hell's my husband? What the hell's going on? So I had to go out and put some sweatpants on so nobody knew I was sitting in my pee pants. Yep. So yeah. that'll happen. I pee my pants all the time. If you're not peeing your pants. <laughs> Call me Miles, Miles Davis. Davis. <laughs> That's <Cool>. right. <laughs> I was peeing off the front of the boat this morning. Porter goes, I'm just going to jam it in reverse. I'm like, Porter? Don't even joke around. And, like, the boat shifted a little bit. And like, I almost went in. And I'm like, Kuh! and he goes, I didn't do anything. That wasn't me. That <laughs> wasn't was, me. That was Nessie. But peeing off a boat is, is, is it's 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 difficult. It's a difficult thing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we, we've covered a ton of ground. It's only been an hour. That's a lot of time. But it's not that much time. But I do want to focus on what, what you have going on with us. Do you have, like, details about the muzzleloader thing if people are interested and they yeah, want to reach people out? People are already booking, I think, right? Yeah, we have um, – so – we have like three guys right now that are like from all over the country that are like do they're like they're new hunters. They're um they I met a couple of them down in Texas. Uh, one kid lives in Maryland, um, and it's it's so weird. Like he's got a crazy huge social media following that's like in a different world, and he doesn't want to say anything about him hunting or fishing. Really? Like, yeah, because he's like it really like the people I'm. You know, the people I'm working with, like, can't know that I do this. Works like, for PETA. Serious? No, it, PETA. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work for PETA, but I think he deals George with, George like, Soros' son. Yeah. <laughs> it's Hunter, Hunter, Hunter and Biden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's coming to our camp. No he, big deal. He's bringing he us his laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Really he might not make it out. Uh, <laughs> but it's... Uh, Good chance. <laughs> it's, it's guys like that that are, like, huge social media followings that almost do us no good by being here, like, but that really want to learn different aspects of stuff. And, you know, there, uh, there is something I think pretty appealing about big North woods, which this is, you know, when I think of big North woods, we're talking Adirondacks, yeah. but when you think big North woods, like if you're from freaking Texas, these this are is big, big woods. North woods, yeah. right? So well, hike up Stead Hill. Yeah. I, I think there's, um, see at the top. Yeah. yeah. See at the top. There's, um, Three guys right now that are like, dude. Oh, and then uh, Nathan Kendall, um, uh, who's a top 30, under 30, I think top 30, under 30 winemakers in the country. Oh, yeah. He's over on uh, Seneca Lake. He's like, dude. Oh, very I cool. I went over to help him. Um, he's like, new bow hunter, uh, new deer hunter. And uh, he's like, dude, I really love what you guys are doing. Like, like, can you come? He's got 17 acres over on Seneca. He's like, can you help me, like, put this together i'm like yeah no problem and he went to pay me i'm like do you want to learn more about this stuff he's like yeah i'm like we're doing the school he goes sign me up so yeah we we do have like three tentative one like full on and it's it is weird because i feel like we don't have it completely flushed out right now to like market it appropriately right. but you know we're gonna be able to put 10 guys here and so your number is 10 numbers 10. and the week is gonna look like what you're gonna you're going to have people staying here. They're going to, everything's going to be, yep. it's basically so going to be a guided hunt. Is it's going to be, going to be. So I think like involving myself, uh, Josh Porter said he'd come help. Porter's an amazing woodsman. Uh, Matt Smythe would totally help. Like where these guys are taking guys, 
like hunting a little bit here, hunting the state land around here, uh, I gave percentages to one of the guys that wanted to know, and I was like, I'm pr- like I'm eighty percent positive that you're gonna you're gonna have eighty percent chance of killing a, a doe, and I think you'll have or at least a chance. Yeah, eighty like I opportunity. Think, yeah, opportunity. That's opportunity. what you, as a guy as a new hunter, I wouldn't give him eighty yeah. percent because a lot of that falls back on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Opportunity not killing. Yep. Yeah, 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 100%. And I, I think, um, you know, probably 40% of killing a decent buck. But it's here the rules are going to be, what would we say, eight point or better here? Eight point or better, 125. Yeah. I'm pushing on your for property. 125 yeah. or better yeah, here. Yeah, 125, 125 or better. And then state land, you can shoot any illegal deer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I think if the snow is flying the right way, like, it's not just what I think is going to be really cool is that we should have deer hanging from beforehand. So there's going to be butchering aspects you can educate of it. That, so actually, yeah. Kevin McCann is a CIA trained butcher, owns McCann's Meat uh, Market in mm. Rochester. Uh, is that code word for murderer? A CIA, CYA trained no. or CIA no. trained butcher? Culinary <laughs> Institute culinary. of America. Okay, and not central Interesting. intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So like, but badass. Like yeah, the Culinary Institute of America is like a presti- like very prestigious uh, uh, chef school. So we'll have so, deer hanging before. So we should have yeah. deer hanging that we can do. You know, break down skinning. Breakdown. Uh, I hope to do a lot of cooking here. Uh, mm-hmm. Do sausage making, you know, burger making, the stuff that like we know tastes good, and like showing them how to do that. You know, yeah. Josh has uh, pellet grills here, black tops. So, like the food's going to be amazing. I think that's a huge aspect of it. Uh, we're going to hunt as hard as you want to hunt. Yeah. You know, if like it's freaking, you know, you guys know what it could be if like. It's here. If it's <laughs> shitty weather and you'd rather <laughs> you wanna, the snow and you're yeah, if you want to hang out and out. play pool and in the house and sit in the hot tub, hot, sit in the hot tub, like that's good for you. If you want to go hunt, I'll hunt as hard as you want to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're, you know, that's, I would love to hunt as hard as I want to. Yeah. You know? So like, if you want to get up and go freaking 4 a.m. and do the 11 mile hike, like I'm in. You yeah, know, that'd be sweet. That'd be bad. And it would be cool to have different, you know, if, if different guys had different desires, you know, figure out how you can line those up. 100%. You know, like during that week, I know that we'll be, I'll be off that week. Yep. I take that whole week off of work and there'll be, you know, some days I'll be doing a group group hunt with my buddies where we'll be doing big. You Are know, you big down this still. way too? Yeah. Oh man, we, we yeah. can do a whole well, that's big that, drive. That's yeah. the thing. Like yeah. if I if I know what you what you guys are doing and what the schedule looks like, I'd love to be figure out a way to get myself involved in I, that. I, because I love that idea because some of the guys are bow hunters. Yeah. They're like, mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, like if you want to go, that's what's cool. Is People like, don't know board. how to do an organized still hunt, right. and it oh, is 100%. the most effective way to gun hunt. Hundred percent in the yeah. big woods. Yeah. It's yeah. the most effective yeah. way to do. Hundred percent. And yeah. like when you know that whole gigantic. 11,000 acres like that you can you know walk in i've got some ideas yeah oh yeah it's uh, that back, back there that's just gigantic that what i, I think the statistic says like 80 percent of all whitetail hunters stop within a mile a, a mile of yeah. the of the, the yeah the if you go to any of our big our big pieces that we have here yeah. like we love hunting it's no secret. Ooh, we talk yeah. about it all the get time. Get in the bottom of there and get a deer out. Yeah. And so that's. We've so done we, it. We I've do, done it. We do not, that. We hunt. We hunt the Cuca gullies. Mm-hmm. Right. That's where I do a lot of doe killing. My prop, my friends own 1,500 acres over there. We, I'm on doe patrol there. I finally got into the okay to bow hunt it two years ago. This is a cool story. They, um, I killed a doe with my bow and arrow two years ago. And um, so they've been on that property since the Mayflower. So 1,500, like they've been 1,500 acres since inception, right? Uh, They have a collection of arrowheads that started with the patriarch of the family off the Mayflower that exists now. They handed me the last arrowhead that out of that collection that was found that said, you're probably the first guy to kill a deer with a bow and arrow since the guy that carried this. No shit. Flipped me an arrowhead. That's really cool. Goosebumps. Every time I say it, that that was been in my pocket. Yeah. Ever since I bought one. But that's, we kill deer in gullies mm-hmm. to do cool man shit. Like, so, oh, we're going to tie some knots. We're going to, like, Well, so, like, our, like, my group, our specialty, all my buddies that we hunt with, we pack everything. Mm-hmm. So, that's what we do. Like, we go into all these places where nobody else really wants to go. Right. And we just shoot them and, and quarter them and pack them out. Love it. So, like, that's a piece that I would love to, love to get involved to, like, yeah. educate people on oh, how yeah. to do that. Yep, I think that's, that's so exactly unique. Exactly what we're talking yeah. about. Like, I just did a podcast the other day with a um, with a guy who's up in uh, up in Massachusetts and into the whole Big Woods thing and yeah. like the culture there. I was busting his chops. I'm like, I 
my goal in life is to get all of these big woods guys to stop dragging their deer out. Right. Because it's like you're, you're, you're freaking, up. you're going to hurt yourself. Right. You're a heart attack. Right. Something mm-hmm. bad's going to happen. Right. It's like quarter your damn deer. Yeah. Bring a bring a three pound scale that not even those little digital scales are how much. If you yeah. want to get your weight, right. get your weight in the tree in the woods. Right. And then pack the deer out, and right. you'll be back to the truck before dark. Yep. You know I, all I, these I, glory stories about dragging for eight hours up and down ravines and. We we hunted the Shawnee and um, which is. 500,000 acres in Illinois, southern Illinois. We've hunted it for, if we did it, we're talking about doing it this year, but I'm not sure if it's going to happen or not. Seven years. Over-the-counter Illinois tag, out-of-state tag is like 700 bucks, but it's like big whitetail. Like every year we've had an opportunity to kill 140 or better. You know, like we're killing big whitetail back there. And you're not, like there's no four-wheelers in the Shawnee. Like there is nothing, and you are back there, man. That is That is some big woods hunting. And uh, we're, I'm blessed with one of my very good friends. His dad is, like, legit old-school woodsman, like, killed a caribou, made, a like, a suit out of the side, <laughs> like, hunts in it still. Like, here's an interesting fact. Do you know what the fringe is for? No one's ever told. Oh, me. the fringe on a jacket. Yeah, do you know no. what it's for? You know what it's for? Waterproofing. Water finds its lowest the oh. whole time, so it's always oh. pull, dripping off you. That's what the Indians use that fringe for. Okay. So... Really cool. That's that's uh, that is cool as hell. I that's know him it. telling Learned me something that. New today. But that's the, that was him telling me. You know what that fringe was for? And it's not like you know, I always think like uh, Dumb and Dumber when right, you're walking right, right, through. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, it's like you know for fashion. He goes waterproof and boy, you're dumb. And then, but this this guy's like legit, like horseback, Idaho backwoods cool. hunter, and he's like, you know, I shot a, a a doe for camp meet in Illinois, and I'm like getting it ready to like drag out and he goes what are you doing I'm like we're gonna get this thing out of here he's like not like that and like j- just starts taking it apart and like oh my god this is so much better and he and now we carry you know uh, uh cheesecloth with us whatever yep. we're, we're hunting back there just to put those things in your backpack yep. and carry them out because it's a hundred times easier deboning all that stuff than it is oh, dragging that stuff yeah. out but mm-hmm. it is things like that that like like right here how long have you been hunting i mean i'm 34 i've been with my dad since I was young. But, I mean, I've been hunting since I was old enough to hunt. You got 20 years on your belt? 20, 20, 25 20 years? years, yeah. Same? Yeah. I'm 400 years old, so, really collectively, yeah. like, collectively, seriously, there's 60, 70 years of hunting experience right yeah. at this table. That And we've all probably hunted different ways than each other have and have had different experiences. It, it's the that knowledge. And I, obviously, I want to do this for, you know, a business gain. But at the same time, like, that knowledge, it's like what Charlie Alshamber did. Um, change the way like people hunt. Change the way that um, you know when you're, you take your vacation. When you're when, yeah. yeah, when you're, yeah, right, right. you look at the calendar my, based off the lunar. Yeah, my dad's right, like, right. oh, we got between here and here. Right, That's when right. Charlie said to hunt. But, but, That's yeah. when we're taking. But those days old off. guys, those old guys that were respectful hunters that kind of forged the way good hunters hunt now. Like instead of you know the backwoods you know thirty odd six in the gun rack and thirty rack on the on the ground the ground, uh, uh, you know it takes guys like that to 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 form these new hunters that like you can here's a way to do it that's probably not the right way and here's a way that we've had a lot of success with that you know here's here's like what we know here's here's how to do it and and you know from tracking. To cooking, to butchering, to blood trailing, every single aspect of it. Like, think of like how much you, information you have to pass on. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, my, in my heart of hearts, like I want to change the way that people look at New York. I want to change the way people look at the Finger Lakes, and like put good people in the woods that are stewards. Yeah. You know, that are real it, hunting the right way. You're like real conservationists. You know, and if you can pass along that message and like really give that whatever Zen is, whatever that feeling is of like doing it all the right way to a young man or a dad with his kid, like you're bonded for life to that person. 100%, you know, yeah. there's, and I guarantee, I'll tell you just real quick, uh, my kindergarten best friend, uh, I, I hadn't seen him in forever. I, he was, this guy was laughing at a bar. I'm like, is your name Miguel? And he goes, yeah, yeah. Why? I'm like, dude, we went to kindergarten together, and I recognize your laugh. He goes, what? I'm like, my name's Jason. He goes, Jason, oh, my God. And uh, finds out that I'm, like, a crazy outdoorsman and stuff. He goes, I've always wanted to bow hunt. I brought, like, every step of the way. Like, 
helped him get a bow, like helped him shoot the bow, like mm-hmm. did, like helped him set up his first tree stand. Uh, I was up north in the Adirondacks, and he called me and the day he got his first deer, and I was doing jumping jacks. I was like just elated, and that feeling is. I want that so much yeah. over and over again. And that, that kid is doing things the, the right way. And he's passing that along to his friends. Like, mm-hmm. here's how to do it. Here's how to do it. And that ripple effect that goes out into the world is a really, That's really good thing. That's the best way we can do it. It's a really, yeah. really good thing. I think it's we really need to do thing. something with what you said, the, f- the hunting nucleus. Yeah. Like, that, that's kind of like what we all want. Like, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not fun to just go kill deer by yourself. It's not. No. It's more fun having your kid do it or a kid's yeah. buddy do it or somebody else. Uh, just getting new people into the sport and getting into the outdoors, that's, I think, collectively, the whole group, yeah. that's what they want to do. So I think, And that's why anybody gets going with coming to an event like this. If you're somebody who's a solo individual, you, I mean, you've been to some – you just talked about yeah. these events you went to at Sornex. Like, you go there with a – you don't know what you're going to walk away with. You walk away with lifelong friends, people mm-hmm. you're going to travel the country, do adventures with, experiences you're yeah. going to have. Like, that's what, that's what people, like, what you guys have the opportunity to build here, and right. hopefully we can help with that in some way, shape, or form, is, like, guys that are new to hunting, new to the area, don't know what they want to do, don't have a crew. Yeah. Here's an opportunity for you to come do something that you watch on YouTube and yeah. Facebook and Instagram, guys doing this all over the place. Like, oh, it would be so cool to do. Yeah. Here it is right here. It is right here. And, like, tailor it to what that individual wants. And if they want to do four different t- styles of hunting and you, you have a guy like me who's the, you know, the, the deer still hunting, yep. pack out type of guy, and a guy wants to experience that for a day, let's go do it. Let's go do that. You know, yeah, like, you, you can. to stand and have a heater on and, like, all right, we can do that. Right. Like, you can do that. Yeah. You it's, know, I think it, it is. Yeah. It, it, some people are like, oh, you're in a hut. It's not hunting. I'm like, I don't care if they, if you can get the person out there yeah. and they get an experience. Like, yeah. that's all. That's all that matters. So I, do I, you, do you know do you like for for you guys for like if somebody like me was to do that to come along, would you have to have your outfitters? No, we're license? we're not outfitting people. No. We're just out having fun. And, and, yeah, and not not here. Not so. I think it's uh, uh what's his name? Was just going through it all this morning. Oh, Craig Sleeman, who's a captain. Uh. Like there's certain parts, there's certain counties that don't need anything. Yeah, and I think we're in that county. Okay. So, but I also we're saying that like it's an educational thing first and foremost. Right. That we're not, you know, we're not we are fitting. we are both going to get our guide licenses. Uh, I, when are you doing that? September is the test. Okay. So. So is it just you just take a test? Is what you have to take? It's like the, a, there's a whole study panel. CPR and yeah, all that stuff. All so. that stuff. I I'll I'll get with you all. I'm because it's something that is just incredibly intriguing to me. Yep. And I thought about it back during COVID. It was something I thought about doing and just never did it. But, like, it's something that's so valuable to have. And I think you could do, even if you're not doing it at an event like this, if you had guys that are like, hey, uh, I got a Saturday free, and you put it up, and we're like, hey, a father son wants to sign up with one of our guys, we might be able to just be a hub that be like – this father, father, son wants to hook up with you. They're both free, and they just want to walk the woods with you on a Saturday. Yep. Just so you can get out in the woods yep. and interact with other people because a lot of the doing things wrong, we've all done. So we can curb that really quick with yep. people. And just quick education um, and giving that father time with his kid, son, daughter, whoever, or his wife if she wants to get out, you know. Just getting people out there and connecting a lot of different people, I think, is what yeah. Yeah. we have a really good group of guys already kind of forming. So it's <laughs> yeah. it's getting uh, yeah. the snowball, as we keep saying, yeah. is <laughs> is growing quickly. Yeah. You know, it's it's exciting. It I mean, is very exciting. You know, we we kind of toss around the idea of like, you know, all right, we fix up these cabins and we can start bringing in fish camp. Yeah. You know, we got some fishing guys who you know maybe they get their guide license and yep. they put Porter in. That, a, some Porter some, as so. New York State, you do not need a charter boat license unless you're on Lake Ontario. Erie, Ontario. Right, right, right. The Finger Lakes, you don't need a charter boat. Really? So, but you get, that out this morning. Start it's gearing up, guys, and we're doing yeah. fish camp, and you're like, man, I want to try fly fishing. Well, hey, we got – Matt's we, Mike. Matter of fact. We're sitting here <laughs> fly, we got flying ties in here and, uh, you know, gearing up and go hit Naples. Yeah. Or like, all right, we did that for two days. The other three days, you know – it's a rainy day. You're in here tying, eating, talking, learn how to fillet. Yeah. 
Or you want to go up on one of the ponds and how, learn how to fly fish? If like, you guys want to learn how to fly trout, we can do that right now. I can show you guys. Yeah, I bet you would like to get some get some help, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's it's uh, I'm getting pretty quick. At wow. It. Yeah. Think yeah. about the opportunities here. But so, yeah, you think yeah. like between ice fishing, you ice know, fishing, hiking, spring turkey, kayaking, like this is hit hemlock, up, right? Like be out there in a kayak. Right. You know, there's so many options. It's Porter's so friend close. kayak fishes for those trout. Like I couldn't imagine. Pulling up a seven pound trout, no. 120 foot deep on a kayak. No, couldn't imagine it. But it is like this whole like encompassing group of just amazing folks that are all just doing the cool. Like Craig Stevens, an amazing fisherman. You know, he's a pro walleye fisherman, porter hunt. Oh, like that kid, like I can't, I can't say enough thing, cool things about. It. He's like, like re-engineering farming, like re- breeding animals that taste really good that take a long time to grow that cost a certain amount of money. You know, Matt Smythe is one of the most talented writers I know. I don't read at all. You can't. This is uh, like, you know how your pee fan story happened? No. I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> but Matt. Is we a, all have our. Yeah, I mean, we all have our downfalls, you know. But, Josh hasn't told us yet, but yeah, I'm sure we'll yeah, soften him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. He's been rubbing his foot on the inside of my leg. So like, <laughs> I think I know what Josh's is. I can answer Josh. <laughs> <laughs> but we just, I, I feel like this is kind of the idea of like, there's, how do you get it out there? There's just this, these amazing group of dudes here, people here that are, you know, uh, doing such incredible things. And how do you bring it home to, to keep people here? Starts with doing the muzzleloader hunt yep. this winter. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I think that's like you, all of a sudden people hear about that. And like, holy crap, do you hear about what they're doing? You know, hear what that. And then all of a sudden it becomes a yep. thing, you know. And, you and know I've always. say This is like, you know, we're trophy hunting here. No. This is. No. I want. Get my, down and my, dirty, hurt. Hunt hard, and if you come away with memories, you're gonna win. My, yeah. We say it. We've been. We've come to a real like understanding, like that. We want new hunters to look at their freezers the way they look like antlers on the wall. Yeah. Like if you, like you just got you know 30, 40 pounds of the best meat on the planet. Your freezer. You're filling. You're you're, you're feeding your family. When you're opening that freezer, every sensation that was part of that hunt floods back in you're walking upstairs something to be proud of what you know, I, I have stairs in my house walking upstairs with like whatever it is and yeah. reliving those things i want people to look at their freezers the way they look like yeah know, you're cutting open like i did last night i was thinking about you because you're all into the cooking and posting stuff and i didn't take advantage of the photo opportunity but like i'm cutting open my i had a i had backstrap last night for yeah. my buck i shot in pa last year and it's like you look at that and it's pa buck 21 yeah. and it's Love like it. it right back to that exact yeah. moment how it happened where it happened you're looking at the darkness of that meat where the, it's just that big woods fed deer that's just got a whole another flavor to it you know you can't i i think that's the problem with the the hunting industry outside of this group like that like you're always selling antlers mm-hmm. always selling antlers you know and there's bucks there's big money in bucks you know there's big huge money here's what you gotta do to kill that you gotta do this like if you took away that aspect of the industry and just said here's some of the best meat on the planet and here's how to cook it mm-hmm. like but there's no money in it. like you can't charge people for that that yeah. is that's like one of the last things that that exist that says there's these amazing creatures running around these woods there's these amazing fish swimming in these like if you can cook them you could probably live a pretty good healthy life and plant some vegetables in your own garden the the government is very scared of a person that's self-sustainable no doubt like that is like if you are a self-sustained human which we all should be we all could be we all Mm -hmm. should be you know if you're a self-sustained human you're a you're a dangerous person Mm -hmm. which is insane to me yeah don't collect rainwater (laughs) what am i gonna do with rainwater but you can do a lot of stuff with rainwater can you Let's go offline and talk about it. You want to? <laughs> yes. Oh, wait. Was that, was that some sort of threat? Were you just no. threatening me? Huh? No. Ray, Ray, what did you say? Rain, rain water. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Then you said, let's go. Let's go. What you said you say? offline. We'll talk oh, about it. Oh, I thought you said. Wow, I, did you see him? I just got nervous. Like, he yes, started sir. looking at me, and he was kind of talking about the government. And no, this, no. This, this. Listen. <laughs> I was like, listen. Yeah. No. I, I thought... I thought we were all on the same page. No, we, no, we are all on the same page. <laughs> Jesus, I so, no, I did, I didn't hear what you said. Go offline. I didn't know what you oh, said. Yeah. We're yeah. yeah, you can't, you can't tell people what you could do with what you could do with rainwater. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you'll have yeah. some knocks on the Dangerous door. Shit, man. <laughs> Moonshine. You don't know what you can do with rainwater. Shit. 
Yeah, moonshine. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna so we're gonna reconvene as a group. We'll see. I'll see you guys whether yeah, I bring the should, podcast stuff or not. I think not. you should. I'll yeah. bring it. Uh, the trouble I have when I go to those things is that there's so many good conversations happening. You don't want to miss out on the opportunity to meet somebody. So like, I'll I'll bring the stuff on the thirteenth. Maybe we could do it before. We could, yeah. Just, or maybe right afterwards. Right after. Kinda, I'm going to be in no hurry. Yeah, me neither. So my, it's going to be myself, my, bro, my brother, and my dad. The yep. three of us Wait, will be so there. Why so. don't we do it right afterwards and yeah. we can kind of recap the, oh, yeah. the event. And, I won't yeah. be there for that. But Okay, you're not going to be there. He's going to Colorado. Yeah, scout zone 15. Got to scout. You're a smart man. Yeah. That's a beautiful time. You're, so that's yep. mid-July. That's a nice time to be up there. Yeah. So not, I'm taking my two boys and we're going to go out. Oh, my awesome. buddy and we're going to so go. So is that your two boys that were here? Yeah, two of them and my daughter was running okay. around too. So, or not the two bigger ones. Okay, those are my neighbor and another buddy. So they're my rock pickers nice. and uh, my grunt helper. Around they're here. well behaved. They came over and shook your hand and said goodbye and thank you. Yep, I they're, like it. They're good boys. It's all happening. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yep. They got their first deer up here. They got their first turkey this spring. So they're all pumped. Awesome. They're yep. up slamming some bluegill and bass out of the ponds this morning. So I read it. I read it not too long ago that if, uh, like, if you have a problem with the youth today, what are you doing to change it? Like, what are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. are you coaching Little League? Are you, you know, are you coaching wrestling? Are you bringing these kids out in the woods? Like, I feel, I know I owe a personal debt to the guys that got me out in the woods. No doubt. That, you know, I have to pay, that's, I feel like that's a huge driver in me now is to pay that stuff back. You know, mm-hmm. Dan Hebert, you know, sure as shit didn't need to take me duck hunting when I was a kid, you know, but he did a lot. Yeah. And he sure as shit didn't need to do half the stuff he did for me as a kid and, and uh, never asked for a dollar, never, you know, wanted anything. And he goes, someday you'll understand. And yeah. I feel like it's all starting to set in now about, like, what I need to do to, like, repay those debts. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's – you're spot on with that, you know. And if you're if you're a parent, if you're a father, you need to be engaged with your kids and yeah. be doing stuff with them and going and coaching and getting involved in their activities, yeah. going to their practices. Kid, take your kids to indoor 3D league. Oh, my God, it's they so love much it. fun, man. Yeah. yeah, like, having your kids shoot a bow, I'm like, to, that is – yeah, I think it's one of the coolest things to, like, watch a kid a little. Like, I had my kid shooting her bow at three years old, four years old. So, oh, Kevin McCann's here. CIA trained. <laughs> the butcher. <laughs> the butcher. <yeah. laughs> That's going to be his nickname. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, well, before we get a whole other voice on here, I want to wrap her up because we're good. at an hour and a half, and I got to head her westbound. But yeah. I look forward to the development of all of this. I think what yeah. you guys are doing is super cool, and I yeah. appreciate the opportunity to be here with you and – Yep. And help in any way we can. So anybody wants to get a hold of me, uh, Ellsworth Cooks Instagram seems to be the best platform. Yeah, that's uh, that seems to be the one that's um, or Tarb under seventy seven. That's uh, that's the way uh, I'm on that stuff nonstop. Okay. So. And then as far as far as you, you want to plug the the place on uh, on Airbnb? Do you want it, to plug it's that? on Airbnb? I mean, is there a name of uh, it? Bristol Lodge, I believe. Bristol Lodge. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So. We're getting there. That kind of does its, its own thing. It's kind of already self-populated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you put a place like this on the radar, it's going to get booked up quick. Yeah, it's been going crazy. So. Yeah, but if you want to see what it looks like, check it out. It's pretty badass. Yeah. It's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah, we're already doing some weddings and special events and stuff, so yeah, come book it. It's awesome. Yep. All right, guys, thank Sweet. you so much. Thanks thank you. Lot, appreciate man. it. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, brother. Hate him.